Before we get into today's video, first a big thanks to our faithful sponsor NordVPN. Get 81% off by going to nordvpn.com forward slash sensor gaming or checking out the link in the description. NordVPN allows you to surf the web as if you were located in over 60 countries, meaning you can bypass filters and regional restrictions. It also keeps your internet data secure so you're kept safe when browsing and they are one of the very few companies that has a strict no data logging policy. It's available for mobile as well as PC and it's been consistently voted the best VPN service around. So again, get a huge 81% off by going to nordvpn.com forward slash sensor gaming or checking out the link in the description. And even more by using the code sensor gaming at checkout to get four extra months for free, as well as Nord Pass, which should cost $199 for again completely free. The end of the year is right around the corner, and with that, today we'll be taking a look back at the video game regional differences in 2019. First up, we go to China, which has had a very eventful year. Firstly, the Nintendo Switch finally went on sale in the region this month, marking the first time for a Nintendo console to launch in the region following the 10 year long ban on consoles being lifted in 2014. The Switch is being brought to China through a deal with tech giant Tencent, and the deal will see Tencent handling a lot of the operational side of things in the country, including localizing games into Chinese and navigating the government's long approval process that games have to go through to be released in the country. Due to this strict approval process, the system currently only has one game game available for it, this being New Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. However, many more titles are planned to be released in the near future, including Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Super Mario Odyssey and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Speaking of China's approval process, the year has also saw stricter rules that approvals must follow after a two month long freeze on all approvals back in February. The two month freeze this year was said to be due to the massive backlogs that had amassed following a nearly year long freeze last year to reorganise the approval system. The country now hopes to counteracts this with their further restructured system which further clamps down on adult content and also limits the amount of new approvals per year to around 5,000 titles. As for the game content differences in the region, one notable case is Player Unknown Battlegrounds which was pulled from sale in the country and redesigned so that it would pass the Chinese approval system. Renamed Game for Peace, the Chinese version now has players fighting in a friendly competition where nobody gets hurt and defeated players simply sit down, put their weapons on the floor and wave. The Chinese version also contains various Chinese political messages and themes, which is something that the Chinese regulators like to see in games released in the country. And then whilst not entirely a regional difference, the hit horror game Devotion made headlines earlier in the year when it was pulled from Steam indefinitely due to writing insulting the Chinese leader being accidentally left on some graphic textures. Despite removing these textures, which were said to be from Google Images and used as a placeholder, the game would ultimately be taken down worldwide. The Taiwan developers are likely concerned of repercussions from the Chinese government, and despite removing the game, the Chinese publishers had their business license revoked, with this being very likely to be due to devotion. Moving on from that though, and to Japan, which as is pretty typical in the region, ran into some violence related trouble with some of the bigger western titles released this year. For instance, the Japanese localization of Wolfenstein Young Blood turns down the damaged textures to darken wounds, and the Japanese version of Rage 2 reduces enemy dismemberment. Also like Resident Evil 7, the Japanese version of Resident Evil 2 has also faced various edits even in the higher rated Z version which is for ages 18 years and over. As shown in these comparisons from the Z version, these edits have reduced instances of dismemberment and also other instances of large open wounds. Furthermore, zombie damaged textures are darkened and head dismemberment is no longer possible. These and other changes made to Z rated games are due to the various rules of the Japanese rating system Cero, which forbids certain types of content even with the max rating. Rating. These rules don't just affect violence though, but also nudity, with explicit nudity being outlawed by the rating system. Due to this, games like Metro Exodus had to have changes in Japan to remove any instances of explicit topless nudity, which is a change that has been seen in many other games, such as The Witcher 3 and Grand Theft Auto 5. And then finally, not a regional difference, but a lack of regional differences in the upcoming Tokyo Mirror Sessions port for Nintendo Switch that adds a range of new features. When Tokyo Mirror Sessions was originally release for Wii U, the western versions featured a fairly large amount of changes, with a few examples being various costumes getting altered, the absence of a hot spring DLC, and a number of story points and graphics being changed to remove references to gravel modelling, and replacing this with fully clothed modelling. Nintendo explained that any changes made to in-game contents were due to varying requirements and regulations in the many different territories Nintendo distributes its products. This time around however, Nintendo has announced that the new updated Switch version 
version will be based on the Western version worldwide, including in Japan. Next up, we'll be taking a look at the US and Europe, which this year has seen a number of Japanese titles altered due to either troubles with the Western rating systems or the new content policy introduced by Sony, which takes a tougher stance on adult content but hasn't been explicitly outlined in depth, and so developers have described it as feeling left out of the loop about what's okay or not. Western publisher Spike Chunsoft has been particularly affected by this, with a total of four of their games have been suggestive content reduced, these being Conception Plus, Crystar, Yuno and Zanki Zero Last Beginning. Furthermore, Exceed's Senran Kagura Burst Renewal had to be delayed to remove a feature called Intimacy Mode from the Western PS4 version but not the Steam release. This year has seen some good news for Yakuza fans however, with the Yakuza 3 remaster being released with the same content as over in Japan. What makes this so noteworthy is that when the game was originally released back in 2010, an unusually large amount of content was cut from the western release, with this being attributed to time restraints. Future games would be much more faithful to the Japanese releases, and this trend has now come full circle with the re-release of the remastered version, which restores 4 cut minigames, 21 side missions, the hostess club segments and more. The translation has also been entirely redone from scratch, for not just Yakuza 3 but the remasters of 4 and 5 as well, and this brings them more in line with how the modern Yakuza entries are handled. Next, to move things over to Germany, which has had some big news in relation to its rules regarding the depiction of unconstitutional symbols in games. Last year it was announced that the use of these symbols in games would no longer be automatically be rejected by the German USK rating system due to a change in attitude in the country which will see games having their artistic value taken more into account. This has then paved the way to see Wolfenstein Young Blood becoming the first ever game in the Wolfenstein series to be released 100% uncut in Germany. Furthermore, the game that originally kicked all of this off, Wolfenstein 3D, which was banned in 1998 due to the use of unconstitutional symbols, has now finally had its ban lifted by the German courts. All of this is huge news for the country which up until now has had any depiction of unconstitutional symbols removed from every game released in the country for over 20 years. But then finally to move things to Australia, which the hit survival game DayZ had a run in with in August over drug use related to incentives and rewards. Over in Australia there are a few areas of fiction that are treated fairly strictly, with one of these being the use of drugs where they are seen as offering some kind of incentive or reward for their use, such as granting beneficial effects to the player. Despite not actually being in the game, DayZ was banned in Australia due to a cannabis item being found in the game's files planned for a future update, and that it was said to be used for restoring players health. This was also despite the game already being available in Australia for over 5 years through early access, and also being rated only MA15 plus in Australia through the automatic questionnaire based classification method IOC. Furthermore, this is also despite other drugs such as morphine being in the game and unlike the cannabis, actually implemented and usable. Responding to the Australian decision, the devs announced that they will be removing the offending code from the game for all regions around the world, and this then allowed the title to be approved for a release in Australia with a MA15 plus rating. What do you think about how this year has went and what are your hopes for 2020? As always, please let us know your thoughts in the comments below and a big thanks to NordVPN again for sponsoring today's video. There will be a link in the description if you want to go check their big discount out and until next time, thank you for watching.